So The Fox in the Forest is a two-player trick-taking game, which is a little unique in that generally trick-taking games are played better with higher player counts. Uh, this game is played over the course of a number of rounds until one player hits 21 points. Each round consists of 13 turns, which are called tricks, during which each player simply plays a card into the middle of the table, and then at the end, uh, a winner is determined based on the cards that were played. Uh, let's move on to setup now. Uh, as you can see, Justin is the dealer. He is dealing out 13 cards to each player. The seven remaining cards will be set to the side as a draw deck, and the f one card will be drawn from the top of the deck, which is called the Decree card. As, uh, as the dealer play passes then to Shane, who gets to play the first card, this is setting the lead suit. As the following player, I need to play a card of the same suit which I have. Uh, if I can, I would play another suit, but in this case I have it, so I must play it. And I will play the 11 uh, to follow Shane's 10 of moons. Okay. At this point, we then see who's the winner of the trick. That follows two general rules. Uh, the first of which is to look if any player has played a card of the trump suit. The trump suit is shown on the decree card. In this case, it's keys. Neither player has played a key. We have both played moons. We then follow the second rule, which is looking at the lead suit, moons. Whoever has the card of the higher value will be the winner of the trick. In this case, Justin has beat my 10 with his 11. He takes the two cards and puts them face down in front of him. He is the winner of the trick. At this point, the winner of the trick then becomes the new lead. Okay, so let's talk about the card layout and structure. And here we have the three different suits in the game. We have moons, bells, and keys. And then you'll also notice a value in the top left-hand corner, which range from 1 to 11. There could be one other crucial, crucial piece of information on a card, and that is whether or not it has an ability. All the odd cards in this game have an ability. Uh, the first one is the swan which basically lets you lead the next trick in the event that you lose. We then have the fox, which says when you play this card, you may exchange the decree card with a card from your hand, so you're able to change the trump suit. Next we have the five, which is the woodcutter. This allows you to draw a card from the top of the draw deck and take one card from your hand and put it on the bottom of the draw deck. The seven is the treasure. This says after you win a trick, you get one victory point for each seven that was played in that trick. Nine is the witch. Uh, the witch states when you're determining the winner of a trick, you can change the suit of that card, provided it is the only nine that has been played, to the trump suit. And again, following the rules of winning a trick, we look at trump suit first. And finally, we have the 11, which is the Monarch. Uh, the Monarch states that when you lead, if your opponent has a card of this suit, they must play either the one of the suit or the highest card they have in their hand, which either gives you an easy win or allows you to flush out some of the higher value cards from that suit. So Shane and I have now played 12 of the 13 total tricks in the game. I've won three, Shane has won nine. I am the lead on the final trick. I get to play the first card, and I am playing the 10 of bells. Shane plays the nine of keys. In this case, I have the higher numbered card, but Shane has the trump card, which is keys. So Shane actually wins this trick. And that is the end of the game. I've won three. Uh, I've won three, and Shane has won 10 here. We move into final scoring. You can see this breaks down sort of an interesting chart here with different tiers. On the leftmost column there, you've got number of tricks won, number of points awarded, and then a thematic description on the far right there. I have won zero to three tricks, so I'm actually gonna get six points. And in this case, Shane has won 10. And if you look all the way at the bottom, he's been deemed as greedy and he has zero points. So it literally has come down to this last trick, Shane winning the trick uh, and taking zero points. I take six points and we move on to the next round of the game. Mechanically, I don't feel like this game is much different than many other trick-taking games, uh, so, except for the fact that you uh, are rated on how well or how poorly you do, uh, that you can sort of let up on the gas uh, and throttle your actions as you're playing. You don't want to get too far ahead, and you also don't want to get too far behind. 
Yeah, agreed. I mean, there's the little twist thrown in of a Trump suit, which is nice. It keeps it fresh. Uh, and the idea of collecting some victory points from specific ability cards. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty standard trick-taking game. Uh, the idea that you look at your entire hand and you have to sort of plan out how you're going to play the entire round. It's like, I don't want to pitch too many of these cards that kind of lose control, that, that cause me to lose control. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's something great. You were talking about the throttling that you can look at your hand in the very beginning and see if I have low value cards. Okay, maybe I'm going to try and not win any tricks. And there are abilities that allow you to potentially succeed in that respect. The woodcutter specifically, you can be cycling high value cards out of your deck and hopefully getting ones, twos, threes so you can continue to lose. Um, as to the theme, it's okay. In as, you know, in as much as it really matters in a trick taking game, it's not too important in the mechanics of the game. It's pleasant. I like you know the fairy tale aspect of it. Uh, the artwork is great. What do you agreed? Yeah, I think the theme doesn't quite doesn't matter that it doesn't really fit because it's a fairly simple game. It's a fairly simple trick taking game. But the art is beautiful. Actually, this uh, illustrator, uh, her name is Jennifer. Actually, check out some of her work on 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 Twitter. Uh, really, really love the art. I think that the the variety between all the different cards and all the different suits is really cool. Uh, it's 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 elegant. It's clean. I love the art a lot in this game. What do you think our playtime ran? Playtime, I think, was a little bit longer, and I, I, I think I, I tend, tend to estimate that it would be a little bit higher than the box estimates. That it says 30 minutes on the box, uh, but I think due to the analytical nature of this, and particularly because that's kind of our play style, uh, I think I would estimate at least 45 minutes, particularly because you have to get to a total of 21 points. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth in the times that we've played this. It, it took us a, a while to get to 20 to 21. Yeah, absolutely. I think probably that 45 minute range. Depending how analytical you are, if you play a card game and you're just slapping down cards, yeah, you could play it in 20 minutes if you wanted to. Just depends what kind of gamer you are, really. Um, in terms of the value, it was great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's under 20 bucks. Uh, again, the artwork is fantastic. You're going to get a lot of plays out of this if you like trick taking games. Play seamlessly, pretty quickly, despite the fact we said 45 minutes. You feel like you're always doing something, and that's mm -hmm. you know, it's a notion of a two-player game. Then you're right. You are going to get a lot of plays out of this. It's accessible. It's uh, it's easy to teach, uh, especially because trick-taking games by nature are all fairly similar. Uh, but it's very easy to teach, and it's accessible in that you are because you're only playing with one person. You're always playing as a reaction. I play one thing, and you play to this. It's not going around the table, and you sort of have to take a look at what everyone's got. It's, it's a yes or no. It's fairly easy to make your decisions, and I think that that makes learning this game very, very accessible. Yeah, one of the only caveats, kind of the twist, and it's one of the great parts about the game, is the notion of the trump suit. So that can make the scoring a little difficult the first time around, but as soon as you've got that, or if you've played a trick-taking game with a trump suit before, then, then you'll have no trouble picking it up. For sure. I can see playing this game uh, for a long time, particularly because it's cheap, it's small, it's easy to bring out, uh, and it's really, really pleasant to look at. I can see playing this a lot and this being on my shelf for a long time. Uh, and in terms of how it compares to other trick-taking games, uh, it is fairly unique and uh, and stands out above some of my other favorite trick-taking games. Red Seven would be another one that I also really like, uh, but I can see this I can see this topping the list pretty quickly. Agreed. Those are my two favorites as well, but I think this, despite the fact that I haven't been that many places overtaking Red 7, is my favorite trick-taking game.